Howdy folks, my name is Paul Sherlin, and I'm out here with Mason. We're going to be talking about uh, the physics of being bucked off your horse. I did another video, the physics of uh, falling off your horse, and also talk about the physics of hitting the ground. Um, I was riding Mason. Mason was 18 at the time. He's almost 25 now, um, but uh, was riding him, and I'd been riding him for an hour, so he was uh, and certainly warmed up. Um, came back into the round pen here to uh, work on uh, trot to canter transitions. I gave him a little bit more rain so he could stretch down and um, I was hoping that he would become more uh, relaxed and fluid in his transitions. Well, he used that extra freedom to buck. And I had a, <clears throat> just a you know, a, an inkling that something might happen. So I have this strap on the saddle. Uh, it's called a night latch, but you know, it can be a dog collar, whatever. And so I grabbed it uh, before I um, gave him the extra, ex, extra rein. And he bucked right away. Uh, we trotted and he bucked. And, um, I was thrown within, I think, the first jump. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a clear memory of exactly what happened, but at least the thrown part. But um, in the pasture, when he bucks, he bucks like a rodeo bronc with his hind legs uh, way up in the air. Um, and I've heard from some clinicians that the ranch he comes from has a reputation of, uh, of breeding some horses that can buck. Not bucking horses, but some horses that if they, if they do buck, they can do it well. He can do it well when he, uh, when he has, a, <clears throat> has the motivation to. But this time I had that handhold. And uh, so I, you know, again, um, going back to Newton, uh, an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by a force. An object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by a force. Well, he, we were going along at a trot. With that buck, he changed my motion. He changed it upwards and probably forwards. And um, the force that I needed to generate to stay in the saddle was proportional to my weight. And at that time, I, I still weighed, um, you know, maybe 210, 215. And um, I was reading a book, <clears throat> I've read a book, the author talking about problem horses says that uh, he's never known a successful bronc rider, professional bronc rider who weighed more than 185 pounds. Well, I was not a, I, I make no pretense of being a bronc rider, but he was bucking like a bronc horse in, uh, in a rodeo and I didn't have a prayer of staying with him. So the weight didn't help me, but that handhold did. That didn't keep me in the saddle, but it, um, I was holding, holding on the handhold and I actually came down on the left side of, of Mason here. And I think because I was holding on, it decelerated me enough so that I was able to land on my feet. Now I was still off balance and I still fell backwards, but I was wearing a helmet <clears throat> and I was not hurt. My right hand felt like it was about 10 feet long and it was sore. Uh, because of the, the strength that I'd used to try and stay in the saddle, but I was not hurt. So if you're a Western rider, hey, you may want to get one of these, uh, a dog collar or, or a night latch or something like that. If things start to get Western, uh, that might be a good thing to hold on to. But also, uh, Mr. Newton has, Sir Isaac has some guidance for us. If you can lose a few pounds, that will keep you safer too. Um, you'll land with less force and you'll be able to stay in the saddle with less force too. You'll have to generate less force using your seat and or handhold to stay in the saddle and not fall off in the first place. So again, my name is Paul Sherland and this is Mason. Say goodbye, Mason. Thank you very much.